host uh, CNN Stream Yard. I have with me a very special guest, uh, additional Solicitor General Ashwarya Bharti, who's been there uh, at the time when these judgments are being passed. She has been the counter uh, and has worked very hard in this particular case. Not only this, but she's also been batting for women's rights and has also appeared in matters like the women entry into the NDM. Ma'am, welcome to CNN News 18. My first question to you is your first reactions on this particular judgment. Uh, Landmark one coming in from Justice Chanchur. Yes, uh, thank you very much for having me, Ananya ji. I was uh, privileged to be part of this uh, as law officer of the Union of India. And yes, it is a proud day uh, for every woman in India, every woman citizen of India, every woman who chooses to live in India, call her, uh, call India her home. Um, I think uh, the Indian Constitutional Court has shown to the world what it really means uh, when they talk about uh, reproductive rights being part of the right of dignity of women, part of the right of personal autonomy of women, and the right being available to one and all. Every woman falls uh, within the criteria that is prescribed. Ma'am, another very important question that emerges out it that at a time when progressive countries like the United States in Joe versus Wade could not actually give out that particular right. They curtailed the particular right to abort to a woman. And uh, India has now paved the way. Is it that India has also paved the way for international judiciary to look into and this judgment would be looked upon by the international legal expert as well? Uh, I would absolutely agree with you, Ananya ji, on that because uh, uh, interestingly, the, uh, the, the reversal of Roe versus Wade, which happened in the judgment of Dobbs this year, was essentially on a premise that constitution has to be interpreted on the parameters of what the constitution makers intended at that time. Now, U.S. Supreme Court is almost 230 years old. Our, our, sorry, the U.S. Constitution. Our constitution is about 70 years old. But our constitutional courts have consistently followed the principle that constitution is an organic, dynamic document. And the part three rights, especially, which are the fundamental rights, they are like empty vessels. The Supreme Court constitutional bench has said so, that they are like empty vessels and every generation has to fill those empty vessels with the wisdom of its time, not re relegating it back to what the constitution makers thought at the time when the constitution was enacted. So a very dynamic, organic, progressive, reformative interpretation uh, uh, coming out from our constitutional court. Uh, it's a great interpretation, I would say. Um, another question that arises is, and I want you to throw light on it is that a part of this judgment actually talk about teenage relationships, uh, adolescents relationship and how section 19 of the FOXO is now not mandatory where a doctor had to inform the police about it. If you could throw some light on it and how uh, does it matter actually in the general parlance? So, uh, Ananya ji, here the issue was not uh, of Section 19 because the, the petitioner here was a major uh, person. She was in a consensual live-in relationship. But uh, yes, this is an aspect that the court has uh, uh, engaged on. And this is a this is a reality that is existing that POXO has. Uh, it's a 2012 Act, uh, the POXO Act, but it has uh, thrown some very, uh, very vexed and very peculiar positions where you know uh, uh, experimentative teenage sexual encounters and interactions are facing the brunt of uh, uh, you know falling in the, on the wrong side of law and therefore the right of medical termination of pregnancy which is an access to access to a safe termination of pregnancy for any woman whether she's a you know she's a child now medical termination of pregnancy act interestingly has a special provision for minors so here already the minors are treated as, as an uh, extra, uh, um, you know, extra category where they are uh, falling in that rare category where termination is allowed up to 24 weeks. But uh, the Supreme Court now coming out emphatically on this also paves way where there are consensual relationships, including, uh, you know, involving teenagers. The Section 19 cannot be given a go-by yet, uh, but the aspect is that the medical termination of pregnancy, the right under uh, MGP Act of a safe abortion cannot be denied to a teenager on the pretext that reporting is mandatory. Reporting is, a, is a, you know, under also is a separate uh, instance has to be it. The anonymity has to be you know, you know, that we have to ultimately appreciate. Also, also is an act which is important for the welfare of minors. 
can't be interpreted in a manner where the welfare of minors itself is given a go hard. Uh, a very beautiful aspect of this judgment is, and uh, I would like to say that in the beginning of the judgment itself, uh, Justice Chandrachu, the, the whole judgment has been rendered by this bench headed by Justice D.Y. Chanchur, also comprising Justice A.S. Bopana and uh, this J.B. Partywala. It starts off uh, with saying that the women that we are referring to in this uh, uh, context is not only the cisgender women, but also includes the other um, denominations and the other parlances. So how do you see that this is... Is it something that is very, very progressive in nature and paves the way for relationships that are not yet addressed to by our, um, not only by our legal system, but also by others as well? Yes, absolutely, Ananya ji. I think the Supreme Court has paved way for a very progressive view uh, to the women's uh, reproductive right and her right to uh, specifically, categorically determine how she wants to exercise her bodily integrity, autonomy. After all, childbirth is a, uh, is a, is a responsibility. The burden uh, is uh, taken by the woman herself. So, and MTP Act, you know, our MTP Act, I must also tell you, our MTP Act is a very, uh, very uh, progressive act. In fact, the 2021 amendments uh, paved way for I mean, uh, making it a very, very progressive. Of course, you have to balance the right to life because ultimately you're looking at the, you know, on the other side, there's a uh, there's a fetus, the life, to life of that fetus, the unborn child is also invo involved. But at the same time, uh, the circumstances of the women, uh, MPP Act very categorically says that mental health of the woman, it's not just physical health, her mental health and what are her circumstances which are existing and which are likely to be there. The court has given beautiful interpretations on those aspects. I think, uh, you know, covering every woman who, uh, you know, who would need uh, the assistance of safe termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the gender that she was born in, if she needs access to safe termination of pregnancy, she has have that under the MGP Act. Last two questions before I let you go is that one uh, deals with a part in the judgment which says that uh, a woman who uh, becomes pregnant bonds the transformation in her body and that is the reason why she has the right to bodily autonomy. Uh, autonomy. And in fact, uh, the Justice Chanchur has gone very deeply into it. How do you see this coming? Uh, that shows the sensitivity and empathy of the bench of dealing with issues which are essentially and just look at the bench composition interestingly none of the none of the members of the bench are women judges but look at the empathy and sensitivity that they have displayed in uh, you know uh, in, in dealing with such uh, critical such sensitive but yet such important issues for women uh, you know i was i was called in as a law officer i was called in to assist the court the court wanted our assistance and they wanted to lay down law the matter was still pending before the delhi high court only interim relief had been rejected but the court deemed it appropriate that, uh, cons you know, considering the uh, importance of the issues that were uh, there, the court took it upon them to uh, uh, to withdraw the petition from the Delhi High Court and decide it here itself. And uh, I must tell you, the uh, uh, you know, as a law officer of the of India, we also took a very uh, fair stand and a uh, progressive stand, if I can say that, uh, in assisting the court in the in, uh, importance of the petition. Uh, Ma'am, it's a very, very welcoming move that you were actually assisting the court and we were attending those hearings, so we know how well the assistance has been. And with that, I'll just put you through my last question before I let you go. Is another area and a very, very bleak area, which is already under challenge before a uh, bench headed by Justice uh, B. V. Nag uh, a bench headed by Justice Ajay Rostogi and Justice B.V. Nagratna is of marital rapes, when only and only for the nature of MTP and only for medical termination of pregnancy, the Supreme Court has said that uh, the rape under the MTP Act would also include marital rapes. Do you think that it would have actually a bearing on the other litigation that's there that is going on with the constitutional validity of it? Ananya ji, I think you will have to let me go on that question. I, it's an important position that I hold and I might be required to answer that in the court of law. So, uh, of course, all that I can say is when Supreme Court says something, it is the law of the land under Article 141 of the Constitution. So the Supreme Court are entitled to wait. But uh, let me not say anything further. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, 
being in fact a part and parcel to this judgment because this is now paving a way for women for their bodily rights and you have strongly represented the central government out there thank you so much also for your time for being with cnn news 18 thank you so much.